Have you ninjas ever been frustrated with an integral like this because you've wondered if there's a faster way to solve it? I mean, you could use integration by parts, but I'm going to show you a quicker ninja way here. Look at this x squared on the denominator and the fact that up here we have a difference of two terms. Remembering your rules about derivatives, what does this look like to you? That's your hint. Think about it for a second. Okay, if you don't see it, let me remind you of how the quotient rule works for derivatives. Remember that for f of x over g of x, its derivative looks like this expression here. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because instead of using integration by parts, this already looks a lot like the structure of the original problem because here g of x squared on the denominator looks like x squared, and then we have a difference of two terms on the top. So if g of x squared must be x squared, that must mean that g of x is either x or negative x. And I'm going to go ahead and choose x. And what I want to do here is now that I know what g of x is, let's go ahead and plug it into the formula for the quotient rule. But in this video, I do want to point out that because it's an integral problem, what we're doing here is not the quotient rule, but this idea of the reverse quotient rule. Because remember, integrals are going in the backwards direction from derivatives. And so now I have to figure out, though, what f of x is. But that's okay because we know that we need to end up with 1 minus natural log of x over x squared. So if 1 must equal f prime of x times x, and then natural log of x must be f of x times 1, which is just f of x, well, that gives it away. That's pretty simple, right? f of x would have to be natural log of x. And then we just got to confirm whether or not 1 over x, which is this way of undoing the x here on the left, that way the product is a 1, is satisfying the derivative for f of x. And it does, because the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And so this means then that you can verify this for yourself, because if I plug in f of x and g of x into this expression here for the quotient rule, it should simplify then to the original fraction I gave you in this problem. And now for the integral then, instead of wasting time on integration by parts, we know then that one minus natural log of x over x squared came from somebody taking the quotient rule of f of x over g of x to end up with this fraction here. And we know what those are now. This gives you this final answer. And for your homework in the comments below, there's one thing I have to ask you. Should we restrict the domain of x? 